Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, we're going to, for this week, we're going to try to finish off a few things uh, that we studied this week. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that we have here this morning to open up your word. And we invite your spirit's presence into our hearts, into our minds, into our life. We pray for those seeking to perfect a Christian character and to overcome their natures. And we just ask, Lord, that the truths that we study can help in this regard. We pray for one another. We know the trials that we face, but we may be not aware of what others are going through. We just pray for them. We pray for those that uh, oppose the truth. We ask, Lord, that your spirit can convict them and help us, Lord, in being corrected from any errors we may have in our understanding. So we ask for your Holy Spirit here in this study that you can guide and direct us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yesterday, we had talked about the 37 and the 73. That is, we added uh, some numbers together, uh, as we usually do. And those numbers were in... Uh, verse 4, and they were shut up the words. And so you add those together, 5640 and 1697, and you get 76 or 7337. So we had noted that in the footnote that 7337 uh, has these two groupings of digits. It's a, it's a, a mirror. Right, so 73 and 37. 73 is the 21st prime number, and 37 is the 12th prime number. So the one thing that 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 I knew is that Stephen had looked at these before. Uh, we know 21 times 12 is 252. So Stephen has some information here, which we're going to look at. So this goes back to the study that Stephen had done on December 25th, 20, uh, 2021. And that was uh, the 777 years from 457 BC and um, how that relates to the 490 years. That is uh, from the time that Jesus is born uh, in 4 BC to 34 AD with the stoning of Stephen, the end of the 70 weeks. There's 37 years. And then from when he's born to 70 AD is 73 years. So you can see one is that 34 AD is a close of probation and 73 is the execution of a, a judgment. So it's a judgment upon uh, Israel connected to the 490 years. Then we have the 777 years. So that's a symbol that connects to our history. And we see it goes to 321 AD, and there's going to be two Sunday laws by Constantine. So the first one is uh, the seventh day of the third month, and the next one is the third day of the seventh month. So it's going to be July 3rd. 321 is the second Sunday law. The first Sunday law is March 7th. So the 73 and the 37 come together in that structure. So we have all these different symbols that relate to our history. They relate to the symbols of the Sunday law. They relate to close of probation. And, you know, these probably could, uh, there could be a line drawn here, you know, a time at the end and, you know, first message arriving, the second message arriving. It could even be just simply you would take the time that Jesus is born you know, you could you could put the cross in there. You could put some other things in there, but we don't really need to do that at the present. It's just simply to see the 37 and the 73. Any thoughts about this diagram? And gives us a good tie-in with the 777 of Lamech, and of course with the 490, we have the tie back to Daniel 9. Right. So, I mean, there's so many different connections here uh, of symbols right. that are. In history with the 73 and the 37, obviously symbolizing 252. It is veritasium. So just going, uh, dealing with that number 37 
And, uh, you know, I don't want to show you the whole video or anything, but he's going to ask people this question. And so that's what I, so the question that he asks, you know, just, uh, so people are going to pick a random number. So the idea is that they're going to ask, what's the most random number that you can think of between one and a hundred? Now, he's going to find that the most common answer is 37. And, and the question is, you know, why do people choose 37? Well, it just seems kind of odd, right? That is, it's, it is a prime number. And so people might intuitively know that, that there isn't something that it's divisible by. And, and he's not really asking them that. He's not really asking, why are you, you know, is it a number that, and, and I can't remember the statistics. I'm trying to find the image here. Okay, so so he asked lots of people. So there was the number seven was asked a lot or answered a lot why they would think that that's a random number. So when they did this here, they got, uh, I'm trying to remember all the details because it's a pretty long video. So how did they go? So something about, well, here is the, the second question, I guess, is what it is. What it is. So they ask people themselves, uh, but when people are asked, what number do you, do you think the fewest other people submitted? That's how it goes. You're going to see, I don't know if you can see that well, but the number 73 and 37 are the numbers chosen by people to ask. So you, you, you give a random number and then what number do you think the fewest other people submitted? So those are going to be 37 and 73. This is done, uh, the number of respondents, you can see on the left axis there. It's not labeled X or Y, but you can see that that's 5,000 people responded with the number 73 and um, nearly 5,000 also with the number 37. So the number of people here, I can't remember. It's, it's a lot of people. So like, Hundred thousand people or something that are asked. It's maybe not that many, but so you can see that that these numbers stand out: thirty-seven and seventy-three. So I don't know. That was just the thing that I had mentioned. Stephen gave another diagram, and this is just basically a bit of a breaking down of thirty-seven and the seventy-three years from four BC to thirty-four. But he's looking at the gematria of two verses. Now, he's not here, but it's just the gematria, I guess, of Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So if you look at the gematria, it's 2,701. And so 2,701. And, and that would just be... I'm just checking here if that's the English gematria, what the gematria is there. So I'm not sure where he's getting that gematria. So it must be the Hebrew gematria. And let me see if I can just quickly find this. So I'm not, not sure where he gets this. I'm just going to do it myself. So I have a Hebrew gematria calculator. So I don't get that number. I get 2,611. So I'm not sure where he's getting that gematria from, but that's what he has, 2,701. So if that's the case, maybe there's something that I'm doing wrong. But we can connect that to when Christ is born. So it's the, the both these verses that start in the beginning. Um, so I, I have to still kind of figure out where he gets that gematria. Okay. But it's just, it's just, the 73 and the 37, of course, are valid. Whether that verse actually creates the gematria of 2701, I don't know. I don't know if anybody else has any insight into that. Okay. So that just addresses that 7337. So that's the information I have regarding that. So these prime numbers, 73 and 37, that show up. And it's connected to the phrase, Shut up the words. That's what it is. Shut up the words to bar. So to shut up the words, they're see, they're shut up 
or the and they're sealed up, right? So we have so we have shut up the words and sealed the book. So we had uh, sealing the book. We ended up with this eight four six eight, and the significance of that. The only thing I think about that is if you divide it by two, you get four two three four, and the number of days from November ninth eighteen or nineteen eighty nine to. Uh, 911 is 4324 days so the two numbers are inverted but that's a little bit obscure just cutting the number in half now now sealing the book you can think of as a book as you open it up it's got two halves so maybe that's something to do with it but also we're just taking uh, an iter- we're doing the number in reverse so instead of 4234 we're going forth uh, instead of 4324 we're going 4234 I don't know if that's how we would how we would look at that. Whether that's something I should draw in the notes or not, but that's sealing the book. And and the book then would be opened, right? So the book of Daniel is going to be opened and, and we're just connecting that to our, our history, to that period of time. So I don't know what people think of that. Okay, any further thoughts on those numbers? Any thoughts? One of those numbers, so those are okay. okay. So that was dealing with verse four, and uh, many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased. We just took the whole, so we took uh, this nine nine zero eight two, which was uh, many shall run to and fro. That has a log, a natural log of nine point one one, and the sum of the divisors is fourteen thousand four hundred. And then we took, looked at the lexical sum of the verse itself. And so we connected that to the first day of the first month in 1844 to the last day of the year in 2012. And we could see the last day of the year in 2012. That's going to be a symbol that brings us back to Snow's uh, personal testimony. So it's this period of time that uh, relates to the end of a year. And then the start of the new year, 1844, in our history, that's going to be uh, the start of um, the year 2013. So it connects us to 2013. There's probably more there uh, that we could delve into, but for now, that's what we have. So we have now verse 5 we need to look at. And so we have the historical application, which is really clear. One is we know that these verses relate to a Daniel chapter, a Revelation chapter 10. So Daniel chapter 12 relates to Revelation chapter 10. We have a similar scene there, and it's going to be dealing with the seven thunders that are sealed up. And here in this history, it's going to talk about the 1260. Now, we already dealt with the fact that the 1260, if we take uh, the Strong's numbers, that we get 1260 years and seven months, if we just add those together and take them as months, which seems highly unlikely that we would have that 1260 years to seven months relating to the seventh month. So it's going to relate to the month in which the Day of Atonement occurs. Okay, so let's look at this verse uh, five to seven. Uh, Then Daniel looked and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall be the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed with linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, that there shall be a time, times, and in half. And when he had shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. So we, we looked also at uh, the left hand and the right hand, right? So his right hand and his left hand, we added those together and we could count that 11,265 days from November 9th, 1989 to September 11th, 2020. So it marks the date in 2020. That is 19 years from, um, 9-11, right? So it's going to be the 19th anniversary of 9-11, which is a metonic cycle, number of days. So it's uh, interesting in that sense. And then we had, obviously, we looked at the time times and a half. 
So Daniel had looked. Now we talked about this, the word looked. So I dealt with the Mayan calendar. So I didn't put a note about that. Now the Mayan calendar has these uh, five digits, let's say, or counts, right? They'll count the number of days. They'll count the number of times of, of 20, 20 days. So they group it into 20. And then they take those two groups and that's a period of 360 days. And then they have 20 groups of 360 is 7,200. And then 20 groups of that is 144,000. Right? So to, so this idea that Daniel looked that it's attached to this span of time, if we're going to take it as a span of time. And in the, the Mayan calendar, that what they have is when you count the single days, those are called a kin. Unial or u, uinal is the second digit, right? So from right to left. So you count on the right side. You look at there's if there's a one there, that means one day. If there's two there, it's two days, right? And that's a kin. And then the uninal, uinal is the next one. Then the tune, then the katun. So that would be seventy. That goes up to seventy two hundred days. And then the baktun is one hundred and forty four thousand days. Now they also have a, a piktun, which is a twenty baktun, and a piktun would. Which is, or, or pardon me, a, a kal, kalab tune, which is 20 pick tunes. And then, uh, kin chill tune, which is 20 kalab tunes, right? So these become extremely large number of days. So the idea that, you know, the Mayan calendar should have ended on the 13th back tune doesn't really make sense because they can count much higher than that. Uh, the calendar didn't turn over in 2012. It, well, it turned over from one back tune to another, but not to a pick tune. Okay. So a katoon is 7,200 days, which is, uh, 19.7 years approximately. I think that was that regarding the mind calendar. So we had that mind calendar symbol. And of course, Daniel 1840. So we have connected the mind calendar to Josiah Lich's prophecy, right? So we had noted that the 391 years is a period of 142,810 days, uh, which is 12 periods of 11,900 days and 1,190 minutes. And the difference between 142,810 days is 1,100 and 144,000 days is 1,190 days. So this, this, this connection between, uh, Josiah Lich's prophecy and the Mayan calendar. So it's here in symbols. So when Daniel looks, what is he beholding? And, and, and we're trying to make the present truth application. So we know what he's beholding historically. He's going to see these two different people, one on one side of the bank of the river and the other on the other bank of the side of the river on the other bank of the river. And then there's going to be a man clothed in linen, which is upon the waters of the river, right? So there's three people here, right? Three beings. So you've got Christ, who's the one standing on the waters of the river. And there's two people standing on either side. So why is there two people on either side? So one of them is going to say to the man clothed in the linen, which, which is Christ, which is upon the waters of the river. How long shall be the end of these wonders? So he's going to ask that question. And then uh, Daniel's going to hear two people or two other. I don't understand the question, Dwight. I don't know if this microphone is picking up or well or not. Good. When we're reading that verse, as as this is being written, there stood other two. Yeah. The one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. Yeah. So are we talking to people or is this two messages? Well, I mean, he's seen two different beings, right? Angels, one on one side, one on the other. I mean, you're, are you asking if they symbolize messages? Right. I, I think that they symbolize the different periods 
because to me this is a chiasm. You have Christ in the middle, and then you got one on one person on one side of the river, the other on the other side of the river. And one of them is going to ask how long. So I take that that this represents in a sense the two twelve sixties. And then he's going to lift up both his right hand and his left hand, and and he's going to make an oath, right? So what is the right hand of the gospel? Well, I don't know if I would reference it in that sense. I don't think that it's dealing with the health message, if that's what you're asking. I'm I'm asking in this situation if this being that we're we're looking at this that there stood other two. Is it possible that this could be a reference to the entirety of the gospel with Christ standing upon the waters? In other words, standing upon the people. Okay, well, I wouldn't interpret it that way. Okay. Because I think this is this is is asking a specific question. And when we look at what's happening in Revelation 10, we understand that this relates to the prophetic periods themselves. Because that's really what the question is about. So you've got two prophetic periods that are going to be tied together in Daniel chapter 12, the 1260. And then that is the 1260 for the, scat- for the scattering of the power of the holy people. So the first 42 months of the 2520 for northern Israel. And then you have combined in that in the second period, you have the 1290 and the 1335. So instead of counting them from later in Daniel, instead of counting them from 538, they're going to show that overlap of that 30 years, right, from 508 to 1798 and 508 to 18, to the end of 1843, to April 18th, sunset 1844, right? So, so this is more about the prophetic periods, not about specific messages. I mean, you could say messages are connected to it. And I wouldn't hear, just because waters can represent people, I don't think they're representing people here. I mean, there is a connection, obviously, to the idea of that there is a message that goes upon the waters. So it, it is spread to people, right? Because this is a proclamation of a message. You could say that. So I'm not, but I wouldn't just directly say the waters represent people here, you know, in that, in like we do with some other places it, it definitely people are included in here but the main idea is that this is the water of the river and when we go to revelation chapter 10 and we, we look at the difference and we, we've done this a number of times we've looked at these these verses but here he's going to be standing upon the sea right so there are some differences so we have to look at this river as something different than a sea so exactly why in one place it's a sea. And uh, he's going to have this little book open in Revelation chapter 10. Right. So so there are similarities to the scene, but it's not the same scene. Right. It's a different scene, but it uses symbols from Daniel chapter 12. So Revelation 10 is using those symbols. And he's only going to lift up his hand to heaven in Revelation 10 verse 5. And he swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created Heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. So this is going to be at the end of the prophetic periods when the book of Daniel is opened. So the one scene, if we wanted to put it somewhere, because if we're going to take Daniel 12 and say, well, obviously you're going to have Michael standing up. So that's going to be the, you know, the close of probation. But where is Daniel in time, in vision, when he has this vision? Where where is he in Daniel ten to twelve? So so we know he's he's brought in vision to where? To the river. Okay, where's this river, and when is it? Because he's brought to a specific time and a specific place. Well, since he's involved in this, he has to be brought to this at our time. Okay, he's not brought to our time. You know, we, we see this in Daniel 8. So let's let's go here. So this this point, we, sh- we should have the answer to this. So in Daniel chapter 8, he's going to be in the third year of Belshazzar. So this is going to be like 19 years before the fall of Babylon or, or before um, Cyrus's decree. So in the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, he's going to have this vision. 
Now, he's in the time of Babylon, literally, but he's going to be brought uh, to Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam, and he's going to be by the river Uli. So he's going to be brought to Persia for this vision. So we, we can all see that, that that's where he's brought to. And, and so he's going to be brought to to the start of the 2300 days. Right? He's not in the time. He, he's in literally in the time of Babylon still. But now he's going to be brought into the time of Persia. And I would say he's brought to 457 BC. At least he's brought to the time of Persia. He's not in the time of Babylon in vision. So one thing we can see here is that that a prophet can be brought to a future time in Daniel chapter 10, he's going to be he's going to be in the time of Persia. He's going to be in the time of Cyrus. So he's this is going to be like 19 years after uh, the vision of Daniel chapter eight. Right. And now he's going to be beside the Tigris River. Now, why is he beside the Tigris River? The Hittico. And, and that would be the river that he's going to be in in verse 12 or chapter 12. Right. Because that's that's the river that that he has this vision at. So can we f- figure out when he's being brought to? Well, let's let's look at another how long in chapter six of Revelation, verse 10. And they cried with a, cried with a loud voice, saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now, this is the fifth seal where they seize the souls under the altar, those that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony that they held. Now, this is in what period of time is this and what what period is it that they're asking about how long shall it be? You're going to see the sixth seal is going to have this great earthquake, right? We're going to have these uh, harbingers or tokens, right? The Lisbon earthquake, uh, the dark day, and the falling of the stars, right? Those are all going to be mentioned under the sixth seal. So this fifth seal, there's going to be a time when people are being persecuted. So what time is that? And, and the answer is is actually in the sixth seal to the question of how, how long. So what period is ending? The 1260. Okay, so it's the end of the 1260. So could we say that in Daniel chapter 12, that Daniel is in that vision that he's actually brought to the end of the 1260, that he's in, let's say, 508? Does that make sense to people? Or am I... Because because I believe that it's near the end of a period that is that's where the prophet is sometimes not always but it, it, in, in the other one it's near the end of the period that the question of how long is and I would say it's near the end of that period when this how long question is asked and then the question is why is he by the Tigris why is he not by the Euphrates or or some other ri- river he's going to be by the Hittite which is the Tigris. Now, Mesopotamia, which means between the two rivers, usually is the the Euphrates and the Tigris, right? The Daniel 8 is going to be over in Persia uh, by the Uli. And then in Daniel chapter 10, 11, and 12, he's going to be by the Tigris River. Any thoughts on that? And I'm not saying I have a good answer or anything. Okay, so, well, definitely it's going to relate to Babylon. And, and I would just say that the Tigris represents spiritual Babylon, where the Euphrates, the Euphrates is also going to be related to Babylon as well, right? So we know literal Babylon had the river Euphrates going through the city at one time. That's what we understand. It's going to be the drying up of the Euphrates River that's going to allow literal Babylon to fall, Okay. And and we're going to have the river Euphrates dried up in Revelation chapter 16 in the sixth plague. And and we can say, you know, that the Tigris and the Euphrates are part of the same river in a sense. They're branches of it because it's the Tigris-Euphrates river system. But he's going to be by the Tigris, not by the river Euphrates. So um, now they both are going to meet together and then go into the Persian Gulf. So I think there's some reason. I I don't necessarily know the reason. 
but uh, you know it's going to be the Tigris. So we have the Tigris and the Euphrates. They're part of the same river system, but here he's going to be by the Tigris. Now it doesn't give us where he is along the Tigris River. That's where he's going to be. Now, if, in, if we look at this even if, more closely, so so he's going to to physically be beside the Tigris River. So I'm not sure what city he would be in. I would think maybe because he was in Persia that he had, you know, gone over to some place on the Tigris rather than further west over to the Euphrates. But anyway, he's going to have this vision by the Tigris. So that's one thing we know. But can we say that he's brought into the future? Even though he's physically by the Tigris, he's going to be brought into the future. And he's going to be brought near the end of the 1260 for the scattering of the power of the holy people. So he's going to be in that 508 to 538 AD time period. Does that seem reasonable to say that's where he is in time? And then he's going to have uh, this explanation of the 1290 and the 1335. So can we say that if he's there in 508, that that's partly why he's given these time prophecies of the 1290 and the 1335? Because he's at near the end of the 1260. Is that reasonable or not? Any comments on that? Because mostly of what Daniel 12 is addressing, you know, once you have Michael standing up and you have the special resurrection and the, the events, Daniel's going to be given these periods of time. And, and that's mainly what you're going to see in Daniel chapter 12. And these periods of time are going to be connected with this oath. And it's, it's shown in a chiastic way. You got two beings, one on one side of the river, one on the other, and then Christ in the center. It's like Jesus between the two thieves. It's the two 1260s. Do, do we agree with this? Because this, to me, this is an important part of when we make the present truth application. So we know that, that this is going to be in Revelation chapter 12, 12 chapter 10, pardon me, which is uh, parallel to chapter 12 of Daniel has some similarities, but now we have to make an application of this, what we would call a present truth application. That is, we say, how, what do these symbols point to in our time? So so one thing we see in Millerite history is there are some chiastic structures, right? And, and the 1260 and the, the two 1260s created a chiastic structure. There's definitely chiastic structures in Daniel, chronological structures. Now, what are the chiasms in our history? We have a few of them. What what are some of the chiasms? What's the one Jeff discovered? Anybody remember what, what chiasm Jeff discovered? So he discovered the first chiasm in our history, which is the Levitical chiasm, right? That's gonna have it's gonna have March 27th, 2019 as the center of it. Okay. And then we're gonna have the 777 chiasm. Right, so that's going to have June 22nd as the center of it. No thoughts on this? So if we have a chiasm, should these numbers relate in some ways to our chiasm? So the two chiasms, the center June 22nd and the other one March 27th, point to uh, FFA and to the message to the Levites, right? So June 22nd becoming a date that symbolizes FFA. And March 27th, the message to believe us, the 273. And in our history, what's unsealed is not the book of Daniel, but the seven thunders, right? So the seven thunders let out of their voices, right? They're going to be sealed up. And in our history, so that's Millerite history that's sealed up. In our history, Millerite history, in our time, Millerite history is unsealed. That's the basic idea of our history. That's that's really the purpose of this movement in, you know, the first step in the purpose of this movement is understanding Millerite history. And then, of course, we have to make other people understand Millerite history. And we can see that goes right back to Jeff dealing with, you know, the first things that he discovered was a repeat of Millerite history. You know, before he really understood anything else, he knew that history was being repeated. And and he knew that this that there were parts of Daniel chapter 11, at least that Ellen White said the history in connection with this prophecy will be repeated. And so so he began his study with those premises. 
And he came, we came to realize that as we move through our history, the understanding of Millerite history was unfolded. And then we experienced Millerite history on lots of different levels. You know, but one of the main things is we had a disappointment and we had the scattering uh, that we see with Millerite history. Uh, with their disappointment, we have uh, the events that are parallel, Jeff paralleling Miller, this movement uh, paralleling what happened in 1850 with James and Ellen White. So if we're going to make a present truth application of these verses, we're going to write in stuff in red. And we say, Daniel looked. Okay, so he looked and, and we can see the, the symbols there. So what would we say? about this what is this looking we got 1840 and we have the mind calendar so we're going to have this looking so what is he looking at what is this about are people following what what, what i'm doing here is everyone lost he is looking to see how god moves throughout time through all the the events that are happening he's trying to see god's hand hand in history right but i'm saying for us here now these symbols, 1840 and 7,200, what is that referring to in our history? Because Daniel looked, we, we can see what he was looking at, right? We understand that he's, he's going to be giving these prophetic periods. And, but we're in the history where the seven thunders are going to be unsealed, right? He, he, there he, he's talking about the unsealing of the book of Daniel. So we have a parallel in our history is not really the unsealing of the book of Daniel, but it's the unsealing of the seven thunders, right? Obviously, the book of Daniel and Revelation are all connected, but it, it's really about the seven thunders, understanding Millerite history. What was sealed up for our history was Millerite history. So if he's looking, we can see 1840 and 7,200, right? So now together... You know, we could say, well, that's 9,040, right? So we would have a symbol of 9,040. And there are different things I could do with 9,040 as, as, as symbols, okay? So one thing I can do is I can put the number in my number properties, um, the number properties in the number empire, and, and I'll have lots of different things that will show up. So... I'll show you what I'm doing. So here I have the number, and I can see it's it's factorization, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 113. You can see 113 and 2, 2, 6, right? You see that there? So 2, 2, 6 represents June 22nd, right? And 311 represents the 11th day of the third month that in Millerite history, right? Because we're unsealing Millerite history, unsealing the seven thunders. And that's going to relate to Je uh, Samuel Snow's Pentecost letter, right? So it's going to be on uh, June 22nd that he has this letter, that he writes it. It's going to be published five days later on June 27th. June 27th is the 11th day of the third month because the sixth day of the third month is Pentecost when he writes it. And if you take the 11th day of the third month and you double it, you get the 22nd day of the sixth month. So we can see here in that number of 1840 and 7,200 that we can get these symbols. Does that make sense to people? And, you know, 80 times 11, 1113 is... 9940 or 40 times 226 is 9040. <clears throat> now you can also see when I add 80, so I can multiply 80 times 1100 or yeah, 1100 or 113, or I could add 80 and 113. What do I get if I add 80 and 113? So I'm going to put this in footnotes here. But, uh, okay, so I have. I have this uh, here. So I'm going to say H1840, that's the name Daniel, plus H7200 equals 9040, which equals uh, 113 
I'm going to use this symbol times 80, right? It is also equal to 40 times um, 226, right? So that represents the 22nd of June and the 11th day of the third month. So it relates to Samuel Snow's Pentecost letter. I don't know why it shows those words spelled wrong. So Samuel Snow's Pentecost letter. We also can say 113 plus 80 equals 193, right? Which is 391, okay? So we can see we get these symbols uh, that relate to Millerite history, but they also relate to 1840 and the connection in 1840 with our history of the Mayan calendar and the 391, right? So lots of different symbols that can be seen here. I don't know why it does that. It's not spelled wrong. Okay. So if we're going to place this in our history, if we're going to connect it to our history, so Daniel beholds this, right? He's going to look and it says, and behold, now 2009, and then there stood other two. So other two, you got 312, which is the word other, and then two is 8147. And one, that's uh, Ichad, on this side, so you got 2008 of the bank of the river, right? And the other on that side. Right, the bank of the river. So it's just got, uh, sort of repeats itself. We get two, one on this side of the river, one on that side. The Hebrew words are the same. This and that, there's no difference in Hebrew. Now just, oh, there was another thing about the 9040, which I forgot to do. Okay. So I'll go back here. Now, one, one thing that I will do sometimes with a number is I will look at the sum of the divisors. Right. So this one is 21,204. And sometimes I'll look at, you know, the octal, see that's base eight or the base 12 or base 16. And I can use these numbers. So I could use this 21,520. Now that is, uh, it's roughly 60. What is it? So 21,520. By, by 365 and a quarter, it's okay. It's going to be almost 59 years now. So sometimes, you know, we use symbols that are connected with the lines that we already have. You know, I could count it from my birthday, right? I could say, well, okay, 21,520 days from my birthday because we use my birthday in these lines. So if I go back, uh, February 6, 1963, then 21,520. And that's going to bring me to January 6th as an inclusive count in 2022. So it could bring me there. could be January 7th if I did a cardinal count. January 7th is December 25th, 2021. So... That, that's kind of interesting because it does bring us to the symbolic date of December 25th, 2021, 2021 Julian. Okay. Okay. So just going to do that again. So if I go for my birthday, 21, 520. Right. So it's going to bring us to January 7th, December 25th. And I think that's probably the most significant as a symbol uh, because it brings us to the end of the the 777 structure. Now, some people say, well, you know, it's bringing you to the Julian date of that, but that's fine because it's a symbol, right? So the idea then is that I can take this number and also note 9040 in base eight, or I could have done it this way. I could have put an eight here and use this. Like that, that would mean base eight. That's just another way of writing base eight. So do it this way. Put it in brackets. Oops, that bracket's gonna. Okay, so we got base eight equals, I guess I wouldn't do it that way. I'd actually do it this way. Let me just hang on. 
because what I would get base eight or another way of saying, here's, here's the other way to do it. I got to do this right. Equals two, one, five, two, zero. And then I would put the base eight there. That's what I would do. There we go. And then I put base eight. February 6th, 1963 to December 25th, 2021, Julian. Okay. So it, it brings us to that symbolic date. So it doesn't literally bring us to that date. It just brings it to that date as a symbol. Okay. So I've got the footnote written in there. So, so that, so Daniel looking, right? He looked, Daniel looked, gives us all of those symbols. And so I would think it's significant. It ties it to our history. Okay. And then we have Daniel looked and behold. And we got this behold is the number. 2009. And, and we're also going to have the number 2008 later. But 2009 is 49 times 41. And 2008 is 251 times 8. Okay. So we have those symbols. Uh, 208, 209. Whether they're symbols or not. We have those numbers. And I think there's some other stuff I noticed, but I don't see it now. Okay, I'm just looking at this a little bit more closely in Hebrew. Yeah, so the Hebrew gives a different word order, right? So sometimes I look at the word order in Hebrew. So in Hebrew, it's going to start with the word look, um, looked, 7200. So the sentence doesn't start with then I. So it's it's going to say looked, ani, which is I, looked I, Daniel, right? So it's just going to have a different order. And then it says, uh, Behold, and then it's going to have 8147, and that's why is not represented. Okay, that's going to be two. So it's going to say, behold, two others, right? Behold, two others. And then they stood the one on um, the one side of the river, one side of the bank of the river, and the other on the one the other on against the bank of the river is actually what it says here. Okay, so we got these, I don't know, those little boxes pop up when I'm looking at the at this. So they're going to be in a different order. So if I had 7200 plus 589 plus, okay, so 589. So I looked. I get 7789. So you're not seeing there. You see this black thing, right? But that's just me adding those together. 589 is that uh, uh, the word dealing with I, and then the 720 is looked. So I added them together, I get 7789. Now, of course, this could be a period of time. I looked, you got 21.325 years minus 21 equals, multiply the decimal with 365 and a quarter. And then what happened there? Oh, I. I did that wrong here and here. So, again, okay. so I want to have, I don't know what I did there, but I think I just added it. So, the 21 years minus 21. Okay, and then you multiply it by 360. So, it's 1118 or 1119 days. Not 11, 118 days or 119 days, right? Depending on where, where you start. So, it's going to be 21 years. And most likely 119 days from wherever, wherever you start. So if we started from 2001, right, it's going to bring us into 2022 or 23, probably into 2023. So that number, right, so you're going to add 21 years, that's 22. And then you go, so it's going to bring us to January 7th, 2023 or December 25th, 2022. So this is going to bring us one year past that other date that we had. I need to show the screen here. Right. So that's where it's going to bring us to January. So it's going to bring us one year past this other date that we had had created by taking the, the, the base eight of 9040. So that's kind of interesting that we, we get a, the same symbol. Again, it's a Julian date of December 25th. 
Okay, so so you can see we we have these symbols that definitely what we're already saying is that this this verse here is addressing the message that this movement has given. Right, so this movement has given a message in relation to time, July 18, 2020, and it's connected to the 777 structure, to this December 25th date. And so this is things we already know. So these numbers aren't telling us anything we don't know. It's what we already know. So if we're going to to say what this, when Daniel looked, that this relates to studying Millerite history. That's what he's going to do. This is the studying of Millerite history, or really even more specifically, the symbols in Millerite history, right? Symbolic dates, spans of time, all of those things. Now then, and then it says, and behold. So he's going to behold something. He looked and beheld, or he, he says behold, that he's going to see this structural chiasm. Okay, so the way that I understand this is, so this is the understanding of these chiasms. That's what we're going to behold. Let me spell that wrong. Okay. Can we agree with that? that? That's what we have beheld. That's what he beholds. He sees these prophetic periods. We understand them as chiasms and we see them in Millerite history. So we're going to study the symbols of Millerite history. We're going to study the prophetic periods. That's really what's being represented here is these two prophetic periods. And, and really the 70th week is represented here as well. You know, you can see Jesus on the cross with the two thieves. You know, here one's going to ask a question. So one of them asks a question. It's a separation of two classes as well, right? Can we see that as well, that this represents Christ on the cross with the two thieves and the separation of the two classes? He's going to be cru crucified between two three thieves, one on his right hand and one on his left hand. Then there's the question of how long. So that how long is... um the end of the 1260 for northern Israel, right? So we can we can clearly see that that's what the question is. Can we see how this is falling into place as we look at this in more detail? That this is relating to our understanding in the present truth application. It's our understanding of these things themselves, but it comes through a study of Millerite history. Okay, and then the question is, what shall be the end of these wonders? Right. So we're going to have uh, the end of these wonders. OK, so what shall be the end of these wonders? So we would have to say that this is connecting us to what in our history? What is the question of how long that's being asked in our history? How, what are you seeing there? Well, the question is how long. So the how long is a question in our history. So we right. have what is that question? In our history, because in, in Millerite history, right, the question that's being asked, how long is the end of the 1260 of the scattering of the power of the holy people? Now, that's not going to bring you to the time of the end, right? It's just going to bring you to the end of the first 1260, the first half of the indignation, not the last half, last end, the first end. OK, so so if we ask this question of how long. Where is this, where is this question being asked and where, where, did, where is it being addressed? So first we're studying Millerite history. So that's one thing we know. We are understanding the chronological chiasms. We see Christ upon the waters of the river. One of those that's on the other, one of the banks of the river is going to ask him the question of how long. And it's going to be that the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river when he held up his symbol there relates to the 1260 itself. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. So there's lots there that we have to look at and see what specifically is it referring to in our history. Because what I see in this is this is the understanding that's given to Daniel, that's going to be uh, related to Millerite history in Revelation chapter 10, right? So this is going to be 
basically the daily, right? And it's going to talk about the daily being taken away and the abomination of desolation being set up in the next verses, right? In Revelation 10, it's going to be at the end of the abomination of desolation. That is, it's going to be addressing Millerite history, what happens at the time of the end. So there should be symbols in here, and we should be able to to address the messages in this movement that are being expressed in an application to our time. Okay? So we're going to stop there for this week. We'll come back to this Sunday. So let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study. I know that this is hard to understand. There's lots of thoughts and lots of things that we need to tie together. I pray that in the time that we have on our own, that we can come to understand these things more clearly. We pray for one another and for the truths that you have given, that we can handle them correctly and share them with others. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.